Imagine two of your college friends just had a baby. They post a selfie with the baby and of course it's adorable and of course you like it. But soon you notice that your news feed starts to change. You see promotions for a baby sling that would be perfect for new parents and it's even got a logo of your old college. And look, there's a discount. So, you buy it. You've got a gift for your friends, the store has made a sale and somewhere there's a giant tech company that earned a little commission on the whole thing. Our personal information is gathered and stored somewhere. Everything that we do with our smartphones and computers is registered and analyzed by companies like Google, Facebook, Apple and Twitter. All this personal data forms the heart for something that makes up the big data. A treasure trove of valuable new insights deduced from our location settings, emails, photographs, texts and everything we do digitally. Companies pay good money to learn everything about us and they use it for a lot more than just targeted advertising. Our personal data can be used to predict the future and that's where the big money is. For all of human history, businesses were trying to sell products or services. Data was always used to sell a physical good or service. But data never was sold as the good itself. When data itself becomes a product to be sold, used and analyzed, it changes the revenue and business models of companies. Data has now become a commodity. The greatest fortunes in history are built almost instantly on other people's data, yet it is very hard to say how much that data is worth. Data brokers are companies that crawl the internet for useful information about users and collect data themselves or buy it from other companies, legally or otherwise and aggregate that information with data from other sources. Data brokerage has become a lucrative industry that generates $200 billion in revenue yearly and it's still growing. Unlike Google, Facebook or Amazon, these data brokers are not providing any goods or services. Sometimes it is very private information that people would not want to share. For example, selling lists of people who have taken antidepressants in the past or whether someone's an alcoholic or if someone in the family has cancer or heart disease or whether someone's gay or straight or whether someone was a victim of sexual assault. This is the type of data that goes beyond just the census level and that data brokers are selling and reselling and packaging about the people as we speak. The California Consumer Privacy Act of 2018 gives consumers more control over the personal information that businesses collect about them. This landmark law secures new privacy rights for California consumers. If you are a California resident, you may ask businesses to disclose what personal information they have about you and what they do with that information. You also have the right to be notified before or at the point that businesses are collecting your personal information and of the types of information that they are collecting. This means that businesses are required to give consumers certain notices explaining their privacy practices. The CCPA applies to many businesses, including data brokers. Andrew Yang, an entrepreneur who ran a very popular campaign as a US Democratic presidential candidate, came up with a very intriguing campaign promise. He wants the users to receive payments for the use of their personal data. His latest initiative, the Data Dividend Project, is going to serve as a union for many consumers to negotiate with tech companies on people's collective behalf. Enoch Liang, CEO of the Data Dividend Project, who's also a trial lawyer and litigator, gives a very interesting analogy about data. If you imagine a tech company that builds its own car and its own engine, that car is not going anywhere without fuel. What's the fuel of 21st century? It's data. And that fuel, we're just giving it away for free and powering the engine of these tech companies to just make more and more money, extract more and more value. Tech companies are not the only one taking our data directly, but they are also going out and buying it from gas stations, otherwise known as data brokers or data resellers. Not only we are giving the fuel directly to the tech companies, but these data brokers and resellers are selling it to the tech companies at gas stations and we are not seeing any value from that either. Facebook, Google and these other big tech companies are collecting tens of billions of dollars per year of people's data. So it's only fair that the people get paid their share too. How is it that Facebook is worth two-thirds of a trillion dollars if it's free? Who is paying them? It's all the advertisers who want to access us and our preferences and micro-target us and access our data and our choices and our likes, the things that we read and consume, who our friends are.
based on the average revenue per user in the United States for Facebook, it is making approximately $10 per month from each user and that number goes up every time. It gets even darker when we realize that our leaders, legislators and lawmakers, they do get their information from the tech companies. It is actually really bad for our mental health when these billion dollar organizations constantly try to target our attention. This has a particularly disastrous effect on the younger generation where rates of anxiety and depression have surged among teenagers and especially teenage girls in part because we are letting ourselves get pushed into this environment where our attention is the commodity. Every click, every action we take is getting sold and resold to people who want to reach us. If you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single video on our channel. As well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button below. We make content on a wide range of subjects and you can even suggest us the topics you want us to cover in the comment section below.